Evansville Sports 360. Today we're talking to one of the brain trust of the Evansville Otters organizations, Coach Bobby Siegel. Bobby, it's a pleasure to talk to you. Hey, thanks. Thanks for having me. What's your earliest memory of baseball? Um, honestly, it's probably um, my first year ever playing um, organized baseball back in Indianapolis. Um, I was at a small church uh, in Indianapolis. I was like a, I think I was like a four-year-old, maybe five-year-old, playing with like six-year-olds and seven-year-olds. It's kind of oh, like nice. kind of like a backup, you know. And a uh, kid didn't show up for a game, and so they put me right in at second base. And uh, I guess the rest is history, to say, to say the least. And that's led to this career that you have. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so did you play Little League growing up? I did, I did. I, I grew up in Indianapolis, uh, started out at that league that I was telling you about, and then I had a bunch of buddies that were in a little bit more of an advanced uh, league that was a little bit more organized, and it ran into the Little League program that ends up in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Wow. Uh, and so we had some pretty good teams, and of course the goal was always, you know, to make it to the state championship, and then when you're 12 years old, you always want to make it to Williamsport. Um, there was another really competitive team around the Indianapolis area, Brownsburg, Indiana, which is uh, produced some big leaguers, Drew Storen, Lance Lynn, oh, yeah. uh, some guys, you know, so they had a really good program, and so that was always like our arch rival growing up, and uh, it was fun. I always loved playing. Now, high school, when you were in high school, what position did you end up playing? Yeah, so like my freshman year, I was still pitching, playing shortstop. I started catching when I was nine years old, um, and part of that was just because, you know, early on, a lot of kids don't want to get in the gear and put all that stuff on and don't really understand the intricacies and the importance of running the show, if you will. And so mm -hmm. at nine years old, I was like, man, I want to do this, you know? And my dad, he was a catcher up through high school and he was like, no, you don't want to do this. And I was like, no, 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 <laughs> I really, really want to catch. And so I threw the gear on. Uh, but going back to your question, uh, played shortstop pitcher, catcher like my freshman year. And then by sophomore year, the varsity coach told me, hey, we really want you to hone in on, on being our, our catcher. And so my sophomore year, there was a senior that was ahead of me that was uh, recruited to go to Winthrop, uh, mm -hmm. which is a division one school out in the Carolinas. And my junior and senior year, I didn't sit out an inning and caught every single inning of uh, varsity baseball. So Nice. Who was uh, your favorite player growing up? Oh, man, that's a tough one. I, uh, I was around the era of, like, Cal Ripken. Okay. The Sammy Sosa, Mark McGuire thing was going on. So uh -huh. I, I really... I really liked Sammy Sosa at the time. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then Ozzie Guillen. My dad was a White Sox fan growing up, and so I watched Ozzie Guillen and a lot of those guys uh, when they were playing, too, in Chicago. Former Padre prospect who traded for Lamar Hoyt. Sadly, I remember it well. <laughs> so you end up going to college. You go to IU. I did, yeah. Did you, play, you, you catch there? Yeah, yeah. I was a, I was a catcher. Uh, walked onto the team there. Really didn't get a whole lot of, of playing time my freshman, sophomore year, but... By junior year, I was I was on the field a little bit and just really, you know, just trying to put my time in and, and earn my way out onto the field. And so my first three years, I played for a guy by the name of Bob Morgan, who was at IU for a very long time. And then uh, my senior year, we had a coaching change. Tracy Smith okay. came in to coach. He's the current coach at Arizona State University. Okay, that's so, a big program. Yeah, yeah. That's a so big he's, job. He's worked his way up and really developed IU. I mean, they've got that new complex, uh, new facilities, and they're – pretty much a top 25 team now it seems like every year so it's it's cool to say you're an alum unfortunately we were kind of during the rebuilding process and yeah right now they're established for yeah, sure yeah very good team so, so. you uh, you graduate from college uh, did you play any uh, minor league ball did you get I drafted didn't, I didn't no just kind of seeing my playing time and, and that kind of thing uh, I didn't really pursue the independent site um, didn't really know a ton about it either uh -huh. uh, so I ended up taking my sport management and sport marketing degree and putting that into action and I got a call from um, a guy by the name of Nick Crawl who's actually believe it or not this is a long time ago now 2007 uh, he's the current GM of the Cincinnati Reds but he called me at the time I was at Indiana University and said hey we got your resume here through the HR department saw that you might be interested in some baseball operations opportunities and I said yeah let's do it so the whole 2007 season I spent my first two months down in Sarasota with, okay. with spring training and their single A team and then by May, they shipped me up to Cincinnati, and I was working in the baseball operations department as an intern during the 2007 season, back when Griffey and Adam Dunn oh, yeah. and all those guys were playing. So it was Josh Hamilton made his comeback that year, Ken Griffey, and so it was Brandon Phillips. It was a great time, but um, they didn't have anything for me full-time at the end of the season, and so Nick asked me, like, hey, do you want to get into scouting? What are you looking to do? And another intern and I were talking about getting our master's degree and um, – 
getting into coaching and seeing how we like that. And I'll tell you that 2007 season, I was as close to the field as I could possibly get without being in uniform and being on the field. And it was just, I'm just a people person. I'm a worker. I love to interact with guys. I like to see them grow and develop and, you know, get better and have success. And so uh, here I am in uniform, I guess, what, 13, almost 13 years later. So. Well, who was your influ big in biggest influence uh, when you decided to get into coaching? Oh man, that's a great question. On the coaching realm of things, it, honestly, the first two years was kind of a trial run for me. Like I really didn't know if I would like coaching. And uh, there's a guy by the name of Bart Osborne who's down at Union College in Kentucky. It's a real small NAI school, but he was pretty much the guy that, that showed me the way, um, how to grind, how to put together daily practice plans, how to be competitive. Um, Preparation, you know, he, he came from Murray State, uh, was a was a recruiting coordinator there Good before school. before he took over the head coaching job at Union, and really just took me in as almost one of his own. He had three kids of his own, and would constantly have me over on weekends for dinner and watching football games during the fall, and just really treated me like a son and showed me how you you know how you should prepare if if you want to compete for championships, and so that. You know, it, I couldn't ask for a better person as far as that goes. I, do, I really didn't have anybody going into it that I that pushed me towards it. It was more of a trial run, and being around Bart for two years, man, I just here I am. So, well, what do you think about working here in Bossy Field and working under Andy? Love it, I love it. I could, couldn't ask for a better uh, better boss to work under. Um, Mr. Bussing, obviously, um, you know, is is the bones behind the operation and, and makes this place run. But um, Andy, you know, he gave me an opportunity to come in and work with his hitters on a day-to-day -day basis. And we didn't really have any connection prior to uh, the 2016 season. So he was really, you know, checking, his, checking his, my references and asking people around about me just because we didn't really know each other that well. And um, I, I've just enjoyed every aspect that he brings to the table as far as being professional, let me do what I do. Um, you know, he's organized, he, he has high expectations. and keeps me on my toes and, and, and wants to hear, you know, wants to hear my input, you know, also towards whether it's starting lineups or who's hot or, you know, who's who's getting work in, who's making adjustments. And so he's he's been awesome to work for. I love working for Andy. So last question, when the off season comes, what do you do? Oh man, well now I, I've got a, a family of four at home, including oh, okay. myself. And so I've got two little ones, one who's gonna be four in August, the other one's gonna be two, a, a baby, or not a baby boy anymore. He's growing up on me, but, uh, uh, almost four-year-old son and almost two-year-old daughter and so uh, they keep me really busy I mean the the first couple months and then uh, I also work at a indoor facility over in Boonville Indiana okay uh, it's called Britain's bullpen and we train uh, softball and baseball players uh, during the late fall and winter months when obviously in Indiana it's not ideal to get out right. in the cages here you know outdoors and stuff like that so I love just spreading knowledge about the game and trying to give new ideas to younger kids and hopefully show them a passion and, and a drive that hopefully they can take onto their teams and their little leagues. I so. love it. From talking to you, I understand why Andy hired you because you have passion for the game and it looks like you really connect well with these guys. Well, I appreciate it. Thanks a lot for having me. Thank you so much, Bobby. All right. Come out to Bossy Field. Look at a pro right up close, a guy who does a great job. Thank you, man. Thank you.